Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now, I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop effect we're going to be looking at the lighting effects filter. Now I've taken a daytime shot here and made it look kind of like a moonlit nighttime shot and I've done that primarily with the lighting effects filter. You can see my layers over here on the right hand side. If I hide this group, there's the original daytime shot. And then here's this kind of spooky nighttime shot. Several things going on in here. First, there is the background right here. This has the lighting effects filter on it. This is kind of a vignetting appearance, a bit brighter right up in this area here. Kind of a glow happening in there. To give it more of the evening look, I added in a layer here, a filter layer and just added in that coloration and then finally I played around with the sky a little bit making that a little bit more interesting than the very very top. So pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead now and see how this is done. I'll just get this one out of the way. And here we are on the basic image. Now the main thing again we're looking at is going to be using the lighting effects filter. But let's first get the other stuff out of the way. I'm going to make a copy of this. Is just drag this down to the new layer button, make a copy, then I'll hide that. That gives me my original image as a safety second. I'll just go back to that. We'll put the lighting effects on this image here. Now above this we're going to be putting in some of that bluish purplish coloration. Let's get that out of the way and the sky part of that out of the way as well. Pretty easy to do. So let's just go up here to layer and new fill layer. Solid color, choose OK. And let's just choose kind of a dark, kind of a soft purplish kind of thing. Something around here somewhere. Doesn't need to be exact. I'm just giving kind of a cool coloration. And then we're going to be adding this into Image and Behind with the Multiply filter. We can then scale back on the opacity on that to control just the right amount. Now it looks a little bit too purple to me, so let's double click on this, brings us back up again. Let's shift that down a little more into the blues. And that looks better. Okay, so it just gives us our our kind of tone for that, so we have that one set aside. I also want to be able to come in here and do something on the skyline in there to help minimize that sky effect. I'm going to do that with a, a dark gradient. So We'll put a new layer in. There we go, new layer. And I'll create a selection right along the top of the wall. It doesn't need to be exact for this particular step. I'll just use the polygonal lasso tool. And I'll just come just right to the edge of these rocks in here. And just make a fast selection. Now for this kind of a selection if I was doing this for an actual job of course I take much longer and be far more careful about making this selection but for this demo this will be fine and just following along with the polygonal lasso tool which is great for this kind of wall effect and just about through carry it outside and then I'll bring it around the top and back to my starting point gives me a selection we can now fill this selection with you know, anything we want I'm going to be doing a a black to dark blue gradient so let's just go to our paint bucket and change that to the gradient tool go up here so look at our gradients nothing that I already want in here so let's just make a new one want black on the one side and want a dark purple 
on the other side. Purple to a bit of a bit of a blueish. Right in there somewhere. Just a real dark, real subtle gradient. And then I'll pull that straight across. There we go. And then let's just deselect that. That gives me some coloration to use. So I have the kind of cool effect down here and the coloration up there. I can then use any of my blending modes up here to blend that into the sky. I think the darker color works out just fine for that one. All right, that gives me the basic colorations. Now we can work with the lighting effects filter itself. You'll find the lighting effects filter under the filter menu and down here under render and it's the very bottom one down there, lighting effects. And there it is. It starts off with a basic light as you can see here. This is a spotlight and there are two ways of working with our controls. One is to use the controls right on the light itself. You can actually grab the center point and move it around. Notice I have a little light icon up there that's kind of following this around. And this gives me the basic aiming point of the light source. This little control here controls the brightness of the light source right there. And then this controls the drop off to black. You can even come in here and grab this and adjust this about pull it in a little bit here and you can kind of swing this around and stuff it's a lot of controls on that I'll pull it in a bit so I have a bit of a drop-off shadow down there and move things around a little bit so those are your basic controls here notice that if you pull this in too far it begins to go kind of oblong when it first starts out it's round now the other way of working with this and has a little more control than, than these things. These are kind of you know fun little little fast adjustments, but where you have real control is up here on the properties. For this, there's we have you can see two tabs: the light tab shows you how many lights you have. We're working with just one here, and the properties tab. With the properties tab, you can adjust the properties for any light. If you bring the light tab up, you can actually bring in additional lights. Click the little light thing over here. You can bring in additional lights. But we'll stick with just the one for now. And then we can choose the kind of light. A point light or the spotlight effect or an infinite light effect. So here's our infinite light. I think we'll use the spotlight on this. And let me just bring this back and kind of get that back in line again. Bring our hot spot up and bring this out. Notice how when you get up to a certain point, it begins to shift like that. It actually changes from a circle out to an ellipse. I want to kind of like that. I want to have my hot spot up here and then some darkening around the edges, right? So kind of like that. And that's back where we were. You can adjust the color of the light. Blue works out well for us in this case. You can adjust the intensity of the light. This is exactly the same control as that little control right there. On the hot spot, you can adjust just the size of the hot spot. And that's how far the brightness, you know, our brightness goes out to here and then here to here. This is the drop off. This is where it fades out. So it's bright to here and then fades out to there. And out beyond here, there's no light. You can colorize the whole thing and adjust your exposure. Notice if I go up a little bit, it gets a little more contrasty as well, which actually works out better for this. And you have a gloss metallic setting. You can kind of play around with those to get just the right effect. And then there's an ambience effect in here. That's how much light is inside the spill area. And on just a little bit there, not too much like that. And you can get real fancy if you want to. You can actually come in here and you can texture in different set your different zones here. Your, your red channel, your green channel, your blue channel, and then adjust that as well. But that takes care of our, our basic lighting effect. Let's go back to our lights again. And then up in our options over here is we have different presets you can actually choose from. So you can just grab one of these basic presets if you want to have a 
starting place, such as a blue omni light, circle of light crossing down, gives you two lights crossing, five lights shining straight down, a floodlight effect, five lights shining straight up, kind of like a, a stage effect. So you can come in here and you can try these different ones. The RGB lights gives you a red, green, and blue around you know three corners of your picture, all kind of shining in. Interesting little little effects. And then here we can come in and we can add a new spotlight, or we can add a new point light, or we can add a new infinite light. I'll add a spotlight. There I am, and I'm going to just bring this one right up here and give me a little extra light at the top of our picture. Now to switch back and forth between your lights, click on the light that brings back your controls for that light. So you can see I can switch between these two different controls just like that. Okay, so that gives me my lighting. It's kind of like if you had this your image in a dark room and you had flashlights shining on it in different ways. And you could see what was being lit up by the flashlights. That's kind of the idea here behind this filter. Okay, let's choose OK once you're happy. There that is the you know the basic lighting. We can now bring in my moon colors, my kind of dark colors, and the dark sky. And then simply a matter of adjusting the amount of fill on these so I have just the effect that I want. And I think somewhere in there looks pretty good. Kind of looks like it's dark, maybe like there's a light up here someplace we're not seeing just off screen. And it gives us that nighttime effect using those lighting effects, the lighting effects filter. Again, you find that up here under filter and render and lighting effects right there. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.